Welcome back to the Public Housing Resident Organizing and Participation Toolkit Training Series. The training series is meant to walk public housing residents through how to organize and run a successful resident council so that you can improve your housing and community. We encourage you to participate in the entire training series. This training is based off of Guide 9, Tenant Participation Funds. As you go through the training, you may want to refer to the guide. The information for Guide 9 is split into two trainings. If you missed Part 1, Go back and watch that training first. Also, please note that the next training will walk you through the tools to properly manage tenant participation funds, the tenant participation funds agreement, budget and work plan, and decision support tool. This training will cover the following subjects related to tenant participation funds, which throughout the training may be referred to as TP funds. The Public Housing Agency, or PHA, roles and responsibilities, Resident Council Roles and Responsibilities. Financial Management of TP Funds, including Accounting and Internal Controls. Tracking Documentation and Practices for Paying Out Funds. Distribution of TP Funds to Resident Councils. What to do if there's been a misappropriation of funds. Unused Funds. Audits and... Resources. Please note that the resources pertain to both sections of this training and include links to the related sections of the Code of Federal Regulations related to TP funds. The next training in this series will cover tools that can help with the tenant participation funds. Before moving into specifics, here are some key points related to TP funds. Properly managing tenant participation funds requires collaboration between the resident council and PHA that both the resident council and PHA carry out their roles and responsibilities, and that residents play a role in overseeing TP funds. Proper financial management is key to receiving funds, properly distributing funds, and building trust and engagement around their use. The housing agency's role with regards to tenant participation funds is to collaborate with the resident council on a written agreement on how funds will be distributed and used. Provide TP funds to the resident council in a timely manner. Ensure requested expenses are allowed under HUD guidelines and the agreement. Ensure requested expenses incorporate strong financial controls. Advise the resident council on supporting documentation needed to verify and audit expenses. Maintain accurate records of TP funds and expenditures and share this with resident councils. And inspect and audit the resident council's financial records. The resident council's role is to determine how TP funds will be used to improve the quality of life for its residents. Ensure that expenses are in line with the agreement with the PHA. And ensure that expenses comply with HUD requirements. All residents have important roles to play in ensuring TP funds are properly managed. Residents should ask questions to understand where the funds go. Insist that funds cannot be spent without a budget approved by the resident council. Hold the board accountable by reviewing records and reports. Elect treasurers with the required skills. And contact the housing agency if they suspect something is not appropriate. Let's do a quick knowledge check. A role or roles of the residents related to TP funds is to A. Review the resident council's records and reports. B. Ensure requested expenses are allowed under HUD guidelines and the agreement. C. Properly distribute funds. Or D. All of the above. We'll pause for a moment for you to consider your answer. You can always pause the training if you'd like to consult the guide. The answer is A. Residents should review the resident council records and reports to ensure that the funds are being properly managed. We will now review proper financial management of TP funds, starting with accounting. The housing agency may use its portion of tenant participation funds to provide or pay for technical assistance and training and financial management for the resident council. There's no one recommended accounting system. The best accounting system is the one that works for your organization to keep track of all income, expenses, accounts, and related documentation. Your resident council can use a financial record book, Excel document, Google Sheet spreadsheet, or if training is available, QuickBooks to track finances, including when funds are received, 
expenses. Budget to actuals, meaning how the resident council's initial budget compares to the actual amount of money that was received or spent. Amount of funds in any accounts and all related documentation. Be sure that you are tracking tenant participation funds separately from any other funds, such as funds from vending machine sales, a grant, or a fundraiser. Here are some accounting best practices your resident council should use. When you use paper checks, use them in order. Write the purpose in the memo area. Require two signatures on each check, generally one from the treasurer and one from the board president. If a check needs to be voided, save the voided check and make a note. Maintain controls of credit or debit cards. Some PHAs issue cards to resident councils. Anyone holding the card should know its proper uses and statements should be checked to make sure charges are approved. The treasurer should create a monthly financial report and include a reconciled bank statement, account balances, and total of funds available. The current financial record book should be available for residents to review by appointment. After six months, compare the budget to what was actually spent and plan for the rest of the year. Use cash basis accounting, which means that you record income when it's received and expenses when the bill is paid, not when the work is done or the bill is received, but when the money actually comes in or out. Obtain three competitive quotes or bids when purchasing equipment, such as a tablet or computer, or any more expensive purchases based on the agreement with the PHA. Choose the lowest price, assuming quality is about equal, and save quotes for the audit. You can use the budget and work plan template and the disbursement form provided in the toolkit to stay organized. Additional controls that the resident council should utilize are to document that all expenses are authorized by the resident council and board. Secure all financial documents in the office under a lock and have strong protections for electronic records. Have officers beyond the treasurer, particularly the president, review the records. And correct mistakes as swiftly as possible. If you need outside help, consult the housing agency or an independent accounting expert. It is critical to clearly document that the resident council approved expenses and where all money comes from and goes to. This information will be checked during an audit. To show that the budget or specific expenses were approved by the resident council, you will need to record meeting minutes, which include the proposal and a vote for budget approval, budget changes, or expense approval. The treasurer should keep a copy of the minutes. The guide provides a list of everything you should track for all income that is received and for payments, also called disbursements, that are made. HUD recommends that the resident council use a form for disbursements to record all of this information. The budget and work plan template for tenant participation funds includes a disbursement form. The resident council agreement with the housing agency will determine how and when payments are made to or on behalf of the resident council. How these disbursements are made vary greatly among housing agencies and often depend on the capacity of resident councils. Best practices include making payments on a regular schedule and limiting the time between the distribution of funds and resident council expenditures, such as quarterly disbursements. This helps the resident council plan for and use the funds. Larger resident councils may be able to fully take on the accounting required to track tenant participation funds, have their own bank account, and may be able to receive only one or two large distributions for the entire year. If the resident council is smaller or has less capacity, it may be appropriate for the housing agency to maintain more control. Some housing agencies issue debit cards, which allow them to closely track spending, while other resident councils authorize the housing agency to make purchases on their behalf. Let's do another knowledge check. What does cash basis accounting refer to? A, using cash to pay for small expenses. B, tracking an expense when an item is billed. C, recording an expense when the bill is paid, or D, how to document cash received at a fundraiser. We'll take a moment for you to consider your answer. Cash basis accounting refers to C, recording an expense when a bill is actually paid. 
The treasurer's monthly report should include A, a reconciled bank statement, account balance, and total of funds available. B, meeting minutes. C, any resident council contracts. Or D, all of the above. Again, we'll take a moment for you to consider your answer. The correct answer is A. The treasurer should definitely keep meeting minutes in any contracts that involve finances. However, the monthly treasurer's report mainly needs to include a reconciled bank statement, account balance, and total of funds available. For any income that is received, you should record A, the specific purpose of the funds, B, the date when you plan to use the funds, C, whether you received cash or a check, or D, all of the above. Again, we'll pause for a moment for you to consider your answer. The answer is A, the specific purpose of the funds. You can see the full list in the guide, which also includes the source of the money, the date the funds were received, and the date they were deposited with a copy of the bank receipt. Here are a couple actual examples of how tenant participation funds are distributed to resident councils. In Charleston, Kanawha, West Virginia, the PHA either provides money for specific expenses or makes the purchase directly for the resident council based on an annual budget. This lowers the accounting burden on the residents and avoids audit-related issues. In St. Paul, Minnesota, Senior buildings receive direct deposits from the housing agency and use a bill pay program or checks for some stipends. The resident councils may apply for debit cards that are linked to their bank accounts. At the family sites in St. Paul, property managers keep the debit cards and a resident council officer can sign them out for a day to make a purchase, get a receipt, and sign the card back in. The 16 councils get about $2,000 per year in two distributions. They receive the first distribution at the start of their fiscal year, in September, if the council properly tracks all of their expenses, they receive the remainder six months later. If funds are misspent in any way, a remedy should be negotiated between the resident council and the PHA. The negotiation process and possible remedies should be included in the tenant participation funds agreement. Both groups should have the support of a lawyer to negotiate an agreement. Possible remedies include the PHA withholding funds if it finds that money previously distributed was spent in a way that violated the agreement, or the resident council taking responsibility for returning any misspent funds. HUD encourages housing agencies to distribute the entire $15 per unit to resident councils by the end of the year. HUD also encourages resident councils to fully spend their tenant participation funds by the end of the year. At the end of the year, any tenant participation funds in the resident council's accounts may remain for future allowable expenses. However, if the funds have not yet been paid out by the housing agency, because there were not allowable expenses approved, the PHA does not have to pay the resident council balance. If the council has funds from other sources, these can likely carry over from year to year. So the resident council may be able to reallocate and use tenant participation funds to pay for eligible expenses, in order to fully use all of their TP funds by the end of the year. The housing agency is permitted to inspect and audit the resident council's financial records related to the agreement. The audit looks at three main areas. First, financial statements and documents. For example, do bank statements match the resident council's logs? And if cash was used, are there receipts? And was any change deposited? Second, internal controls. Do policies exist and were they followed? For example, did two officers sign every check? And third, compliance with federal laws and the agreement. Were expenses necessary for meeting the resident council's mission? And were three bids obtained for high cost purchases? The resident council must provide related records and documents. Guide nine provides a list of records and documents that the resident council must provide to the PHA for the audit. These include a checkbook, a budget and approved budget revisions, disbursement records, deposit records, receipts, bank statements, meeting minutes, and any cash records when applicable. 
These are resources related to Guide 9, Tenant Participation Funds. Each of the resources has a clickable link in both the slide deck and Guide 9. Thank you for participating in the training on Guide 9, Tenant Participation Funds. This training is part of the Public Housing Resident Organizing and Participation Toolkit. The full toolkit includes topical guides, customizable resident council documents and forms, tools related to tenant participation funds, and case studies of resident organizations around the country. Please move on to the next training on tools related to tenant participation funds, which includes the Tenant Participation Funds Agreement, Budget and Work Plan, and Decision Support Tool.